Hey there, happy Sundays. Welcome to our Sunday with Summit Health. I apologize, it's a little bit later than I expected. Uh, we invited our daughter, son-in-law, and our grandbaby, Nora June, over for dinner, and they came a little bit earlier than I expected. So I'm on here chatting with you guys a little bit later than I expected. Um, what we're going to talk about today is five pillars of health that I really want to encourage you guys to establish. I want these to be such strong foundations that no matter how busy you get, you never let go of these things. So they're gonna be basic, okay? A lot of times we dive into really specific things and we just deep dive into very specific subjects and that can be really helpful, especially when we all love to geek out over health and wellness and fitness and all the things. But sometimes life gets so busy. We are just, we feel like we are hanging on, you know, to the tail of something just whipping us around. And all we want to do is just like, how do I keep my feet on the ground? How do I not let the wheels completely come off the bus? And so what I want to encourage you to do is establish these five foundations to make them such an integral part of your daily routine that no matter how busy you get, these things are just a part of your life. And I think if you can do that, what you'll find is when life settles down a little bit and you're able to get back in your routine, you don't have nearly as far to go as maybe you have in the past. If we can raise our baseline from here to being here, then when we're ready to take things to the next level, it's so much easier because when life gets busy, instead of throwing all caution to the wind and, and lowering our baseline to here, it's just so much easier to then progress and get our feet more well-grounded and focus on our next sort of goal, big goal that we have. So five foundations for health or five pillars of health that I want you guys to focus on no matter how busy life gets. Okay, so first and foremost, let's talk about what is health. What is health to you? What does being healthy mean to you? What does that look like? It might be different for each of us. For me, I, you know I've broken my ankle, I've had to have surgery. What really matters to me? You know how much I love to move. You know how much I love to be in the gym and crush a workout and I love being strong. I love being fit. But the reality is it's really hard for me to not be able to do basic things in life. So that's something that I've realized is super important to me. I want to have my health so that I can do basic things so I can do my own laundry and clean my own house and cook my own food. Those things really matter to me. So what matters to you? What does health look like to you? Is it being independent? Is it being able to shovel your own driveway or walk your dog? Is it being able to do something that a lot of us think is simple but can be challenging for some? And that's maybe putting our luggage in the overhead bin on an airplane. How about playing a round of golf, no matter how old we get? These things really may be what matters to us. So thinking about what health is to you, I want to be a motivation for you to establish these five pillars. We want, again, these to be a foundation. We want these to be the foundation that never moves, the rocks that kind of keep your life together no matter how rocky things get. So what those five things are is nutrition, movement, mindset, sleep, and relationships. Okay. We're gonna dive into these a little bit, but I would love to have any of your feedback as we go or after you've had time to watch this video, share with me your thoughts on these, okay? Some of these we might crush, and some of these, I know a lot of times when we've done this training live, we deep dive into it for about an hour. The one that surprises people most is relationships. But we're gonna explain and we're gonna dive into why those are so important. But first and foremost, the first thing we're going to address is food, our nutrition. We know that three times a day, most often, we need to eat, right? It is so important that what we're putting in our body is what is going to give us the energy that we desire. So the reality is two things that we're gonna talk about, I would say are foundational 
for your health, okay? Number one, eating adequate amounts of protein. Number two, hydrating. Again, you guys, I promised you, I'm stripping it down. I'm keeping it simple. What do I wanna be here? I want I want to be eat your veggies and have some fruit and have some micronutrients and eat some delicious complex carbs. And But literally, no, I don't. This is, when life gets so busy, this is all you can do. Eat your protein, drink your water, okay? These are the foundations. And you guys, to be honest, this has been what I have focused on for the last eight weeks. I know those of you that know, our life has turned upside down, okay? These are the two things that I have focused on. I focused on eating four servings of protein every single day and drinking water every single day, okay? If you can do these things, trust me, it will make such a difference. It's interesting, There were the, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition conducted a study and it found that skipping breakfast negatively impacted the body's ability to control blood sugar and insulin. So I also wanna encourage you, eat your protein at breakfast. Have your protein at breakfast. What's so fun is I actually recently um, on-ramped a client who had wor been working with another coach and we're a client who were trying to get in a good amount of food, right? Performance-based, looking, you know, at trying to be very, very competitive and trying to get in the amount of calories and macronutrients that we need in only two meals was a challenge. So I presented the idea of, huh, okay, so we're, we don't typically eat breakfast. Why is that? What did I decided to, hey, let's tackle something simple for breakfast. It is phenomenal the difference that this client has noticed in just having not, not a gigantic breakfast, but something. It starts the ball rolling. Not only have they reported less anxiousness because it's blood sugar related, right? Uh, less stress in the mornings because we've started our morning with a protein forward breakfast. Simple, very, very simple. If you're struggling with energy, if you're struggling to feel full, satisfied, if you're feeling like your cravings are controlling you, that is definitely a sign that you're not eating enough protein, okay? So number one, eat your protein. Number two, make sure you get it in at breakfast. Remember, you don't have to eat breakfast food for breakfast. Eggs are great, eggs have protein, but honestly on their own, they're not enough. Eggs are not enough. So if I have two eggs for breakfast, I also have, 30 to 50 to 75 grams of lunch meat, whether it be turkey, ham, something simple. Two eggs is not enough, right? Um, so focus on protein for breakfast. And again, you don't have to have breakfast food. You can have chicken breasts, right? My aunt had chicken breasts and asparagus for breakfast the other day. Fantastic, I love it, it's great. Um, number two, uh, when it comes to nutrition, drink your water. Obviously, our recommendation is always half your body weight in water of ounces, right? This is so important, you guys. Not only does water, our body is 70% water. It's important for cellular regulation, for organ function, for tissues. I mean, so often people are like, I have a headache. I don't feel good. I, you know, all these things. And it's just like, well, how much water have we had in the last three days? Oh, you know, eight ounces? Okay, our bodies are pretty darn amazing, but if we don't actually hydrate, we cannot expect our bodies to function well. So make sure we're hydrating. Okay, so done talking about foundation number one, nutrition. Setting that aside, foundation number two, sleep. It is just darn hard to have optimal health if we're not catching enough Zs. So ask yourself, on average, how many hours of sleep do you get? Is it eight hours? Is it seven, six? My goal for any of you would be if you could aim for a minimum of seven hours. So much research has shown that anything less than seven hours, technically we are sleep deprived. And what's interesting is how quickly the inclination for someone to have increased risk of heart disease, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, these things raise exponentially when our hours of sleep fall. 
So super important to get enough sleep. Okay, so life is busy. Maybe you don't, maybe we can't get the amount of sleep that we feel like we should have or optimally function at. Again, these are pillars that happen when, when poo hits the fan, right? So um, what do we do? What are some simple things that we can do when we are super busy? Number one, if you sleep with electronics in your bedroom, make sure they're on airplane mode. Okay, so if you sleep with your phone as your al alarm, okay, put it on airplane mode. When your phone is pulling an electronic signal, that actually messes with the circadian rhythms of our body. And we don't actually have as restorative sleep as we desire. It keeps us in a little bit of a stress state. So if your electronics are in the bedroom, put them on airplane mode. The same is true if you have like a smart TV. Okay, if that's always pulling a Wi-Fi signal, unplug it, turn off the Wi-Fi, whatever you have to do to just let your room be sort of a electronic wave zone free, okay? Again, we're just trying to, if you are sleeping minimal amount of hours, we're trying to get the most restorative sleep. That's why I'm saying this, right? Number two, caffeine. You might feel super tired, okay? You might, when your pillow hits the floor, the floor, <laughs> when your head hits the pillow, if you're like me, five minutes, we're out, right? However, if we have caffeine too late in the day, we might fall asleep, but we may not sleep well. So again, if we're limited in the amount of time that we're sleeping, try to minimize that afternoon caffeine. Again, the whole reason we're having this talk is because life is busy. I don't know what to do. What do I need to do just to keep the wheels on the bus? I get it. Sometimes we are so busy, we need that afternoon kick. We need that afternoon you know, caffeine hit. Really try not to create that cycle because that's what it becomes. It just becomes this roller coaster. I need the caffeine to be awake. Now I can't sleep. Guess what? You're going to need more caffeine the following day. It just becomes this really terrible roller so roller coaster. So um, if you can get some sunshine in the morning, if you can um, just make that nighttime routine a little bit better for sleep, all those things will help as well. Okay. So pillar number three movement. This is when life gets busy, intentional movement is oftentimes the first thing to go. Okay. Getting to the gym. I don't have time. I don't have time to get to the, there's just no time. Right. And especially if we're going to a class structured gym where those class times just don't align with the times that I have. And so it's like, well, because I'm not going to the gym, I'm just going to do nothing. No, do not do that. Okay. Do not do that. Set a step goal. If it's walk around, you know, on your, every 15 minute break, you walk around your office, you know, uh, floor two times on your lunch, you go outside and you make one lap around the building, whatever it is, just because you're busy does not mean there is not time for movement. I promise you there is, and I promise you, you will feel better. Again, when we look at improved glucose tolerance, reducing blood pressure, all these things, movement is really important and it does not have to be what you're used to. If you do not have time to go to the gym, do a body weight workout at home. I've got tons. Message me. I would be happy to send you any of them. Um, hop on YouTube. There's five, 10, 15 minute body weight workouts available. Pinterest is also a great resource for those things. So just make sure you move intentionally. Funny thing is I had a check-in with a couple and I mentioned we're trying to increase our movement. We're looking at steps and we were having a conversation about, I'm like, Hey, how about a 20 minute walk? And one of them mentioned like 20 minutes, it's not even worth going for a walk, right? If it's not an hour, like, what are we doing? I get it. I love that. I love that all in attitude, but the reality is 20 minutes is better than nothing. So if that's all you have, do it. Do not push it off. Okay. Life is busy. Moving is important. Okay. Number four mindset. When, and again, I'm drawing from what I have experienced over the last eight weeks when life is hard and it feels like things are spinning out of control, the hardest thing that I found was 
taking control of my mindset because it was being pulled in so many ways. What we think matters and maintaining a positive outlook, maintaining intentional mindset work is really important. So for me, you guys know how much I value my morning routine. I take care of my personal Bible study in the morning. I take care of personal development in the morning. I journal. Those are really important minutes to me. And sometimes I have 15 and sometimes I have an hour. So it just depends on the morning, but no matter what, I really try to not let a day go by that I don't focus and be intentional on developing a positive outlook. So, um, really just focusing on what you're reading, what you're taking in. Something as sort of a red flag is a, a term that I thought was interesting when I dove into this, when I developed this for a corporate wellness program. There's something called the ladder of perception. And the way that we might recognize that we have some work to do when it comes to mindset is, do we find that we're always having conflict? Do we find that we're always, there's always disruption. There's, you know, conflict. There's little instances here. We're not at peace with coworkers. We're struggling with family members. Our friends, you know, now we're at odd with friends. That might be a sign that we've allowed our mindset to slip. And so what do we do? What do we do then? We have to reground right? We have to refocus and say, okay, what am I taking in? Am I finding that instead of doing my daily Bible reading, instead of doing some intentional mindset work, instead of doing some journaling, instead of reading something productive, I hop on Facebook and I spend every, you know, moment of my downtime on Facebook or playing a game or something else. Are we finding that this is being influenced by maybe who we're around? Are we around someone that is tending to shift our mindset in a way that isn't as positive as it has been in the past? So looking at these things and trying to realize, okay, where's the chink in my armor? What is changed? What is different? And how do I make that adjustment? That can be really helpful. Okay. Uh, life, something to think about is how we perceive the world controls how we progress in the world. So my son-in-law just said it. We had a beautiful Bible study today um, all about perception. If you've read much about Joseph's story and what he went through, you realize it was such a challenging situation. And for someone who could have taken that situation and said, become the victim, become bitter, just really honestly had every reason to feel that way, chose not to, chose not to, chose to be positive, chose to take what he had, what situation he was given and do the absolute best and rise above it in every instance. And so are we focusing on trying to be that type of person? Um, or are we allowing life to get us down? So remember, life is not happening to you, right? Try to remove yourself from being that victim and realize you have control over that. Last pillar, again, the one that is oftentimes most surprising to people, and that's pillar number five, relationships and connections with others. Having healthy, meaningful relationships is truly key to living a long life. This personal connection actually has shown to create mental and emotional stimulation. And this actually boosts these autonomic mood boosters that create longevity, that help us not only feel more joy, feel more uh, happiness, dopamine, all those things, but they actually increase longevity. Part of that is us enjoying a sense of purpose. And when we have good relationships, when we have connection with other humans that mean a lot to us, that really does appear to not only protect our brains, but also protect our health long-term. 
So just a couple things, you guys. I know a couple weeks ago I had posted, I, you know, I asked the question, do you feel like you've got these good habits? And the moment life gets busy, we just throw them out the door. I've been there. I have been there and I'm not saying that I master these perfectly every single day. To be honest, number five, that's the one that I tend to struggle with when life gets so busy because I feel like all I have time for is the necessities. And even when it comes to Chad and I, right, it might be instead of taking the time to really decompress or have that one-on-one -on -one time or take a moment and you know have a hug or take a moment and hey can i rub your feet for you or just have this moment that builds that relationships that builds that connection instead it's like i need to do this and i should be doing this and i should be doing this and we rush from one thing to the other so no matter what it doesn't have to be big right when it comes to nutrition if all you have time for is an egg, have an egg, right? If it, it's better than nothing, it's better than a granola bar, right? Protein. Just focus on what we can do, okay? If you can establish these five pillars to be the mainstays of your day in and day out, no matter how busy life gets now, no matter how much things feel like they're spinning out of control, you will truly feel like when life settles down again, you have far less to climb out of the hole and that's what really matters. You will also handle the busyness, the stress, the chaos so much better. That's the other thing that we have to understand is the moment life gets busy, we want to default to pizza and fast food and don't drink your water and don't move your body and, and let go of connections because we don't have time. But truly, how do we feel about that? How are we going to function? Are we going to feel better? Is that going to pull us out of the chaos and out of the stress? No, it's actually going to perpetuate it more. It's going to propel us into that even more. So stick to these five pillars. And I assure you, you will be happy you did. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the night. It's 10 15. I hope you are sleeping tight in bed because that is where I'm headed. <laughs>